Hello and welcome to One North Maine, Brockton's magazine show. We're in the winter of 2016, and we have a special episode for you today. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. When you hear that name, many things come to mind. Many of you, I'm sure, like me, weren't even born when the doctor was alive. But his message rings strong, and it rings particularly strong in Brockton. There were three events that we covered here at BCA. First, we covered the NAACP Martin Luther King breakfast. It was the 30th. Next, we were over at Messiah Baptist, where Temple Beth Amuna and Messiah Baptist Church collaborated on a special event. And then finally, the Cape Verdean Association took the lead and held a special Martin Luther King ceremony over at St. Edith Stein. Enjoy the show, sit back and relax, and see what your community has to offer. It's truly an honor to be here today celebrating the 30th uh, breakfast that we have given. But if you believe in justice, give yourself a hand clap. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you in here. If you believe in justice, give yourself a hand clap. Now normally we go right into the invocation, but I'm going to say one thing real quick. I noticed that what we did on our flyer, we said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I read somewhere where they said that we are no longer relevant in the civil rights movement. If you believe that that's a lie, clap your hands. I read somewhere that they say that we don't have anything more to fight about. If that was wrong and that's a lie, clap your hands. <laughs> I read somewhere where they said that it's only a black issue. If you believe that that's a lie, clap your hands. <laughs> and the reason why this is still relevant in the civil rights movement, because we remember Freddie Gray. If you remember Freddie Gray, clap your hands. If you want justice for Trayvon Martin, clap your hands. If you believe in justice for Sandra Bland, clap your hands. If you believe that we're still relevant, clap your hands. And let us not forget Tamara Rice. So for those of you who think that we got cobwebs behind our ears and that our feet are stuck to the ground like crazy glue, ah, oh, you're wrong. There is justice to be had, and we are going to continue to fight for justice. Clap your hands if you believe that. This morning, we're going to ask you to stand to your feet. Before the breakfast takes hold of you, you'll be able to open up your booklets and go to the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing. Till earth and heaven ring. You'll find the words in your booklet. We're singing verse 1, and it requires a hearty, a hearty presentation from all of us. Till earth and 
At this time, it's important for the process of recognition to go forward. I'm going to ask that Stephen Bernard join me on the podium and State Representative Claire Cronin. Representative Cronin. Please give these fine people a hand clap. Could the rest of the state delegation please come to the podium? The rest of the state, Michelle. And let's give this delegation as president a hand clap. Good morning. Uh, we would like to offer this citation from the Massachusetts House of Representatives to the Brockton area, the Brockton NAACP, and as it says, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives and the Massachusetts Senate offers its sincerest congratulation to the Brockton NAACP in recognition of the 30th anniversary of the Dr. Martin Luther King breakfast and for the great work you do in our community. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and confirms success in all endeavors. And it's signed by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, and our Brockton delegation, State Senator Michael Brady, State Representative Michelle Dubois, and myself, Claire Cronin. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm a member and everybody else should be too. In this country, the wealthy take advantage of the poor in the middle, and many of us sit back and allow it to happen, especially those of us preachers who also use religion to rape the poor financially. We sit back and we silently allow we sit back and we silently allow the wealthy persons of this country to make decisions about the needs of the downtrodden and the poor. And when the people in the middle trip up, we fail to give them another try. If we can only learn that we are all called by God to worry about the persons in the middle, as did these children on the playground in our economy, the man slash woman in the middle are those persons affected by the failures of the housing market. The man slash woman in the middle are those individuals living in rat infested public housing units and vermin filled slums in the inner cities. The man slash woman in the middle is the single unwed teenage mother who resorts to unprotected sex because the church mothers don't want to talk about sex and she ends up going into another avenue to subside her insecurities. The man slash woman in the middle is the man who commits suicide because the church allows him to play the organ but doesn't respect his orientation. The man slash woman in the middle are the Muslim brothers and sisters who when wearing their hijab and niqab are looked down upon simply because President Bush said that Islamic people blew up the World Trade Center. And a large quantity of our African-American males are also caught in the middle, caught in what is called the mass incarceration complex. That is a result of the declaration on drugs called the war on drugs, which is just really let the white folks off on using larger drugs and lock up black folks for having a dime bag of marijuana. If you can't say amen, just look forward. <laughs> See, the wonderful thing I love about talking at these events, I don't have to bridle my tongue like I do in church. <laughs> so, beloved, we must learn to respect the person in the middle because it doesn't matter who you are. I'm going to say it just like my grandmama said. It don't matter who you is. You are special in the sight of God even if you're in the middle. If you're red, yellow, black, white, Jew, Gentile, Protestant, Catholic, short, fat, tall, 
tall, skinny, cross-eyed, pigeon-toed, bow-legged, knee-knock, short hair, long hair, nappy hair, straight hair, kicky hair, no hair, gay, straight, confused, bisexual, dumb, mute, or even if you just special, you are special. Rabbi Warp gathered the clergy of the city together at Temple Beth Amuna and set the groundwork for what have, we have followed with minor adjustments for 20 years. Rabbi Warp received a letter from Pastor Walker within the week of the first program. I would like to read an excerpt from that letter which sums up the reasons for this program. I don't think there was emails back then, so this is <laughs> actually on Messiah Baptist Stationery, wow. hand typed on a typewriter. So I'm just going to give out one sentence that I thought was very important for today's event. Reverend Walker called our program a microcosm of Dr. King's dream, black and white, rich and poor, Jew and Gentile, getting together to celebrate, and this is in quotes, he quoted this, what ought to be. So today ought to be. A few years ago, I decided to dedicate this program in honor of someone who is no longer with us. Even though I am excited about this program continuing here at 80 Legion Parkway, a piece of this program is missing in my heart. Many of you, whether you are Jewish or not, Remember 479 Torrey Street and all the good things that happened there for all of us. Temple Beth Moon will continue to flourish in the future, but I felt it would be wrong not to remember that beautiful building up on the west side. With these thoughts in mind, today's program is dedicated to our beloved former home at 479 Torrey Street. There's two more. Once you actually have to do the work, you can't be a prophet anymore. Whether the sentiment is more Moses or more of Joshua, thinking, as the Talmud suggests, it reinforces the idea that Moses was torn between serving as a prophet and dealing with all the communal needs. Joshua will later take on this mantle and perhaps weighed down by the burdens of conquering the land, never really functions as a prophet. 
He takes what Moses has given him, a struggling people, and strives to implement the vision of his ancestors. The past year has been filled with tremendous social upheaval as around the country and around our city. We're examining relationships with the police and with overwhelming amounts of gun violence. As discussions about race and power in our society continue, we have a vision for what we know needs to improve, but we're still struggling individually and collectively as a society to take things further. How to implement the justice and love that our country deeply needs. Our entire country must confront the reality that black and brown people are treated different in our society. Where do we go from here? Thank you, Steve, and thanks to all of you for being here and joining on this special occasion. It's, um, in some ways, it's a spiritual act and one where we, we wanted to assist uh, Temple Beth Immune in making a transition from the old to the new <laughs> and to provide a home for that to happen. And uh, so today, as we think about the past and uh, 19 rich years, and we welcome the 20th annual speaker, a very auspicious <laughs> time for us that we look into the future. And you've heard the term, it takes a village. And often we think of place as a village. But I tend to think that it's a time. And so we have a group here that would probably be a good village. And so for the time together that we are here this afternoon, we are a village. And so we can share and we can lift each other up and also um, be able to nurture one another as we've been nurtured. And we thank all those who have contributed to the wonderful meal today. So a great welcome. And <laughs> Greetings to our co-hosts. Thank you so very much to Brother Steve Weiner, to Reverend Jill Wiley. And on behalf of the two of them, I would like to, and the congregation, I welcome all of you to Temple Beth Amuna today. <laughs> welcome to the temple at 80 Legion Parkway. <laughs> now, thank you all very much for being here today. We really are honored by your presence, by the, by the meal, by the, and not just your presence here today but by your presence in this community and what you are and what you do in this community. One of my, um, one of my sheroes, Audre Lord, says that it is not the destiny of black America to repeat white America's mistakes. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. <laughs> I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country. Maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly somewhere I read, of the freedom of speech, somewhere I read, of the freedom of press, somewhere I read, that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. 
And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I don't think any of us can be satisfied in the United States until that war is brought to an honorable end and American soldiers are brought back here to the United States. One day, we will have to stand before the God of history and we will talk in terms of things we've done. And it seems that I can hear the God of history saying, that was not enough. But I was hungry, and you fed me not. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the Anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will, and He's allowed me to go to the mountain. People, People playing. I looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know now that we as people will get to the promised land. Dr. The King, King said, said, I do not fear any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Why, Why should we, we fear? fear? We must learn to live together as brothers, or perish together as fools. We have moved into an era where we are called upon to raise certain basic questions about the whole society. We are called still uh, called upon to give the aid to the beggars who find himself in misery and agonies on life's highway. But one day, we must ask the question of whether an edifice which produced beggars must not be restructured and refurbished. I don't know what will happen now. We've, we've got some difficult days ahead, yeah. but it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And, and we will, will go, go to, to the, the mountaintop. Mountain 50 years ago, 50 years ago, I, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, 50 years ago. And 50 years ago, my mom, pregnant with, with me, she heard Dr. Martin Luther King speak and I would have never thought back then or now that I would one day 
be honored and privileged to speak on his very day. And so I'm so grateful, humble, and honored to be here to celebrate with you. And now give yourselves a hand for being here today. When I think about this event and what Dr. King would want us to do from here, I need someone to shout, dream. dream. Shout, develop. develop. I like this group, this group right here. This is a group, yes, yes, yes. Now shout, deliver. deliver. I'm gonna talk to you guys, yes, yes, yes. Say it again, dream, dream. Develop. Deliver. 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 All right, those are the three words I want you young people and everyone to keep in mind that Dr. King would want us to do going forward. Amen. We're now, now look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, and just say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm going to dream, I'm going to dream. Like, Dr. like Dr. King. Tell him, I'm going to develop. Like President, Obama. like President Obama. Now tell your neighbor, neighbor, I will deliver. I will deliver. And do great things. And I often say, because of what Dr. King did, we are here. And because of what Dr. King did, yes, we're here, but we will become better. Somebody shout, we're coming, we're becoming better. Yes, I agree with what Dr. King said. The measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort, but where he stands in the time of challenge and controversy. And beloved, we are living in some challenging times. But if we continue to do what Dr. King did and dream about it and develop it and deliver it, we will continue being the city of champions that we're called to be. In fact, let the person know who you're sitting next to and look them, smile at them, show your, show your grill, smile at them, and shout, you're looking at a champion. Well, Brockton did it again. They celebrated Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King as only Brockton knows how. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show. To learn more about Brockton Community Access, please visit our website at bcatv.org. You can also check out our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash the Brockton channels all one word. For everyone in One North Maine, I'm Jay Miller. Have a good one. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes.